Coors Field in Denver can be a nightmare for opponents of the Rockies. The Giants found that out yesterday when Colorado beat them with a walk-off win in the bottom of the ninth inning. Yosmero Petit's been on a roll, and tonight he'll try to keep his hot streak going. An inspired run that has included record-setting performances. Giants, Rockies, game two of the series, next. Another evening here at Coors Field as we get ready for Giants baseball. This is game two of this three game series Giants and Rockies. Hi again everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well look the Giants they win the suspended game yesterday but then they lose a ball game where by all rights they felt like they should win. They had a, a couple of nice leads but that's what happens at Coors Field. And I think what everybody would like to see Mike is a nice calm game. And you can only get that if your starting pitcher pitches well. Well, and Yusmero Petit, the starting pitcher tonight for the Giants, is pitching well. He's pitching with a lot of confidence, and he's a finesse guy. And you can make that work in this ballpark. This is not an easy place to pitch, but confidence is essential. Now, the one thing about the Giants, they've done well in National League West this year, 29-25 and 25 overall. The one team that has an advantage over the Giants, the Colorado Rockies, and they're going to try and do some damage to them tonight. All right, it'll be Buster Posey. At first base in the kid, Andrew Susak catching Petit. Stay tuned. We'll take you to our Comcast Sportsnet studios for an update, and we'll do all of that right after this.
by Jack in the Box. Right now at Jack in the Box, try Jack's Spicy Chicken Club Combo for just $4.99 plus tax. And by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability, and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. We're in Denver, and now you're looking inside of Coors Field as we get ready for game two of this series. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission-free boardwalk is open weekends. 86 degrees here at the yard. We have winds at 10 miles per hour. See, the humidity is low, and it is clear. Let's take a look at the Giants lineup, a lineup that has been very productive lately. It's Pagan, Panic, and Buster Posey. And uh, over the last six games, yes, hot. Followed by Sandoval, Pence, and Blanco. Susak gets the start tonight. He'll hit seventh. Crawford, eighth. Petit, ninth. On the hill tonight for the Colorado Rockies is going to be the right-hander, Jordan Lyles, 6'4", 215-pounder. Lyles is 24 years old. He's in his third year at the big league level. This is what he has done at 18 starts, 6 and 2 with a 4-0 ADRA, 72 strikeouts against 40 walks. When you're in the batter's box facing him, you're going to see a fastball that's low to mid-90s, more lows than mids. He's got a curveball changeup in a slider that's more like a cutter. And he has been a little bit inconsistent his last three starts. He's been getting rocked a bit. And one of the things that has dogged him has been his command. He's had 10 walks in the last 16 innings for a pitcher this deep in the air. That usually means his arm is tired. Let's take a look at the outfield playing behind Jordan Lyles tonight starting at the Rockies outfield from left to right. It'll be Dickerson, Stubbs, and Blackman. You get good arms in center and right. Rutledge and Enoa on the left side of the infield. LeMahieu and Morneau on the right side. Jackson Williams will be in the squad putting down the signs. Williams, a former first-round pick with the Giants out of the University of Oklahoma. Very good defensive player. Very good arm. You'll see a good little receiver behind the plate tonight for the Rockies. There's the skipper, Bruce Bochy. And why might he be a little bit happier tonight than yesterday? Well, he's got a kid in the big leagues. And that's his son, Brett. Right there in the middle of your screen, standing behind Mark Gardner. And that is our McDonald's True Stories. Father and son, manager, player. And uh, there you go. It's a pretty good list, including Felipe and Moises Salou. Bob and Aaron Boone. Yogi and Dale Barra. Good group. And the only one of that group that's a pitcher is Bruce Bochy and Brett. There's a call strike as this team game gets underway. So we get started at 641. So a, a big day in the Bochy house. Come on. Well, yeah, I was very fortunate getting off the elevator day at the hotel. As soon as the door opened up, I was seeing the greeting. Brett Bochy just checking in, walking into the hotel, and there was his dad. The two of them shook hands, and they didn't say anything to each other. They just looked at each other, and it was a pretty amazing exchange. Nice moment to witness. To say he's proud is an understatement. And Pagan gets hit. So that's how this game gets started. And the Giants will take that, because here's Joe Panic. Where to get him? Looked like I got him right in the right elbow. How you don't start rubbing this thing immediately? I have no idea. And he's got no protective piece there. Right in the right elbow. Looked like he was trying to throw a cutter at the belt. What you try and do? Throw one flat at the belt from a right-handed pitcher to a left-handed hitter, and he just pulled it in and nailed him. Here's Panic who takes high. Panic hitting 310. He's got a home run. He's got 15 driven in. Two for five yesterday, a game where the Giants and Rockies both banged out hits like it was a spring training game. Giants had 14. The Rockies had 15. Here it's two balls and no strikes. Right now, Lyles is looking for a release point. He's all over the place. Lifetime against the Giants, 1 1 with a 3 3 80 RA.
Well, one other note about uh, Bruce Bochy and his son, Brett. What did he tell us in the clubhouse if he wanted to mess with him? Well, he says, yeah, he goes, I think I'll mess with him. I'll get him up and have him start getting loose in the pin in the first inning. <laughs> he had kind of a hey, evil smile when he said it. Made us laugh. Three and oh to panic. And you can see Lyles aim that. It's a four pitch walk. And here's Buster Posey. So two free gifts of 90 feet right away. Catcher Jackson Williams is going to come out, and talk to Lyles, and say, Yo, we need to throw another pitch outside that fastball. What do you think? The umpire tonight, Larry Vanover, is a, a low ball umpire. It's a low, wide umpire, but it can move around a bit. It can be a little bit frustrating. Vanover been around a long time. He will control the game. See Hernandez, Nauert, and Tom Payne. And that goes from first to third. So here's Buster Posey. And Buster doesn't waste any time, and it's no balls in one strike. Not a bad plan. The pitching coach goes out. What do you think he's telling him he's got to do? Well, he's got to throw a strike. Yeah, so you sit on that first pitch. Three for five yesterday. He's at 299. And a call strike. So just like that, Buster Posey behind in the count. Pablo Sandoval on deck. Giants are 75 and 63. They're two back of the Dodgers in the West. And Buster Posey fouls this one back. I'm looking at, at Corey Dickerson, the left fielder for the Rockies. No respect? No, he's playing shallow. Now, one of the reasons is Dickerson does not have a strong arm, and he'll cheat in just to give himself a better shot to throw out Pagan should there be a single that way. But, you know, there's a lot of room behind him. That's a shallow set for a left fielder, especially for a guy with power like Posey. And Posey spoils a good pitch. Saw that one year where Don Baylor, the skipper of the Rockies, was experimenting with the theory that there were too many balls that were dropping in front of the outfielder, so he moved everybody in shallow about where Dickerson is in left. The result was they started hitting over their heads. Didn't work. Here's another 0 2 pitch, and Buster hits a high fly ball right center field. That Stubbs, who's going to make the catch, and it'll be Pagan who tags easily. And that'll bring up Sandoval. Sandoval last in the game yesterday went two for five. He comes in hitting 291. All these Giants hitters, Posey, Sandoval, Pence, Morse, when he was playing, they all were hanging around that 275. 280 mark, and now they've all crawled into the 290s. I think the panda was in the swing mode. Yeah. Well, I think he was going to swing at that first pitch, no matter where it was. Lyle started it off with that little flat cut. He was aiming right for the belt. That's an ugly finder. Eric Young trying to get out of the way of the ugly final. Let's take a look. Eric Young, the first base coach. EY. Low and away. One ball and one strike. Pence is on deck. Just underway here at Coors Field. All right, ugly finder, Eric Young. <laughs> look out, EY. Still moves pretty good. Two balls and one strike. Lyles had perfect control with Buster Posey at the plate. Not so much now again here with Sandoval. Maybe it's 
the left handed hitter problem. Two balls and one strike. On the ground, LeMayhew is going to spin. They get one there, and they get a pair. So, nice turn. And they need it to be nice. And we played uh, half an inning. Rockies coming up. face it'll be Blackman Enoa and Justin Morneau Drew Stubbs is in the cleanup spot and uh, he's done very very well here in this park Dickerson Rutledge and LeMayhew the former giant Jackson Williams will hit eighth and it'll be Lyles Jordan Lyles hitting ninth on the mound tonight for the Giants will be Yusmira Petit the 29 year old right hander slated to make his eighth star of the season he took the place of Tim Linscom in the Giants rotation. His first six starts this season came in place of either Matt Cain or Tim Hudson. And now he's a fixture in this rotation. Coming off a great start, his last outing against these very same Rockies. Went six strong, gave up one run, didn't walk anybody, struck out nine. You see his statistics on the year. And the thing that jumps off the page is his strikeouts, 96 in 86 innings against 17 walks. It tells you he's a control specialist. Got a fastball, he'll two and four seam. It'll be a high 80s fastball, but with consistency to the corners. Two types of break the ball, a curveball and a slider. And he'll throw a changeup and he'll throw anything at any time. Let's take a look at the defense playing behind this for team tonight. Starting the Giants outfield from left to right. It'll be Blanco, Pagan, and Pence. Best arm in right field. Crawford and Sandoval on the left side. Panic and Posey on the right side. Andrew Susak, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. And here's Charlie Blackman who picked up the hit in the bottom of the ninth inning yesterday to give the Rockies the win. A 10 to 9 win. This is his only hit in six at bats. And he's going to shoot the first pitch fair down the left field line. So this will be an opening double for Blackman. Well that's not very nice. Well, it leads me to believe that Petit struck out nine in his last start against the Rockies. You think they're going to get after him early? Uh, he went up there looking for one pitch in one location. He got the fastball away. And to his credit, he stayed inside and went the opposite way. I mean, that, that's a good discipline to bat right there. And he thought about that pitch all day long, and he put a perfect swing on to beat it. So just like that, one pitch into this game, and Petit's into a stretch. Welcome to Coors Field. Here's Rafael Noah. He made his debut yesterday and went three for four. And here he takes the strike. Petit right back in the strike zone. Bang, strike one. And that something we'll watch tonight. Sandoval is in at third. Buster Posey obviously has to. Respect the fact that you know may lay down a bunt. 
as Petit's going to bluff Blackman back to second. Eight years in the minor leagues for Enoa. And last night he finally got his first big league hit. Easily his best day of his professional career. Had two hits. Pulled on the ground foul. Time now for our Nissan keys to the game. No walks, no errors. In this ballpark, Coors Field is unforgivable if you walk people, if you play sloppy defense. And that is something that we'll watch closely tonight. And we mentioned Petit. Be aggressive with strike one. You cannot let this ballpark intimidate you. You have to be very confident on that first pitch. And those are our Nissan keys to the game. 0 oh 2. And the pitch is wide. One ball and two strikes. Talk about that first day in the big leagues for Enoa yesterday. Three hit day. And an RBI. You think he was calling a few people after last night's ball game? I believe by the time he got to his phone after the game, it had blown up. And nice block by Susak. And what that did is it kept Blackman at second base. Well, right at second, nobody out. I know it's the first inning, but hey, if you can get the strikeout, all the better. A, a non productive out. Take a look at Susak. When he comes out, he makes the block, keeps that ball in front of him, and as he comes out, he will look Blackman back at second base. And once he sees him there, he stops him, gets his momentum going back to the bag, and completes the play. And that's just good fundamentals for a catcher. If he comes up and looks at first base immediately, Blackman takes off. Here's Justin Morneau. And Petit throws the first pitch high and wide. Morneau went one for four yesterday. He's 0 for 6 in his career against Petit. Well, Petit's deceptive. You know, he does not have long arms, he's got short arms. And short arms is short action with the arm. Gets on you quick. It's deceptive. First two pitches are wide to Morneau. Two balls and no strikes. Play pretty straight away. They play off the line of left field. Pitch the gap at left center a little bit. Angel Pagan about three steps over to the right center field grab, gap. They have a slight pull in the infield with the one infielder Crawford, the shortstop, pulled over to the bag at second the most. Susak will come back, and this one's going to be out of play. Rockies are one game over 500 at home. They're 35 and 34. And they're one game over 500 against the Giants. They're nine and eight on the year. It's the only team in the National League West that the Giants do not have an advantage over. Petit just keeping an eye on Blackman. Blackman's got 23 steals, so he knows how to do it. And now Petit had Blackman quite a ways off of the bag and then leaning, but what an awkward way to have to to throw to that shortstop. I think it was Susak that yelled step off. You get the sense though that, that Blackman is thinking about it. And Morneau takes high, three and one. No, no swing. Now that was a no look from Petit. And that could screw a guy up once. If you consistently go no look, you're asking for big time trouble. You gotta check that runner, you gotta vary your looks. 
Come set, look once, go. Come set, look twice, go. Come set, look four times, go. Whatever, just don't be, get predictable. And the three one to Morneau, and he pops it up, and it's going to be out of play again. So it's three and two. Stubbs on deck. Bottom of the first inning. And the pitch. Got him. And that's what Petit does. He can shave corners of the strike zone. And we talked about Vanover's strike zone. It is low and it is wide. You'll get a little bit off of both sides of the plate. And here in a, in a two strike situation, bang, he hits the glove. And Vanover goes right with the call. Here's Stubbs. Stubbs is hitting 290. One for five in the game yesterday. And the first pitch is down low. Giants now aren't quite as concerned about Blackman with two outs. But Panic is going to move a little bit closer to second base. See that 290 average, and that really jumps off the stat sheet for Stubbs. Coming into this year, he was a 239 lifetime hitter with a lot of strikeouts. Great place to hit. Swing and a miss. Take a look at the fastball, a four seam fastball that he just drives right through the target that absolutely nails the outside location. And that's out of play, so it's one and two. Humped up on that velocity, nine to one. It's about where he tops out at. Stubbs late. Blackman with the leadoff double. He's at second. Two and two. Just missed a, about a half a ball low. Watch Susak. He'll give that location very late. Now watch Susak. There's a little cat and mouse game with Blackman at second base. Susak will set an inside target, then he hops over to the outside corner so as not to tip location. He'll set up early inside, hoping that maybe Blackman will relay an inside location to Stubbs at the plate. And in the last instant, when Petit starts his motion, he hops over to the side, the outside corner. See a lot of little things like that from Susak you like. Get on the ground towards the hole. Crawford is going to keep it on the infield, and that's a wise move. Do not throw that because of the speed of Stubbs, but he saves a run. Nice play. Well, and he went with a pretty good arm fake, too. But with Stubbs, you know he's got great speed, even with a big backswing, one of the faster guys in the league. And right here, he goes on his belly. He sees there he's got no chance. But Crawford. Hoping he might get an aggressive Blackman comes up with a good arm fake. But Blackman not biting. Stu Cole, the third base coach, good at doing a good job of keeping Blackman close to that third base sack. But the fact that Crawford got to that ball and caught it saved a run. As we mentioned a couple of times yesterday, this is the fastest infield that we have seen this year.
Dickerson is three for nine against Petit. Lifetime with a home run. And he takes down low. One ball and no strikes. Dickerson scored three runs yesterday. He's having a good season. And here he takes a strike. Next pitch will be number 20. This place will make you work. You're a pitcher. Right now. Both guys had to work. Look, this is very close to a 25 minute inning so far. Down the left field line, foul. And it's one and two. When you think about the very fast infield. Well, lots of carry. You don't have a lot of humidity in the air, so the pitches, the sinkers aren't sinking as much. The sliders aren't sliding as much. But the only thing that gives a, a pitcher a little bit of an edge are the sidelines between the dugouts and the and the baselines. That's a pretty sizable area. So pop-ups that would be foul balls at AT&T are caught here. But that's it. And that's a fair ball down the left field line. And with the speed of Stubbs, they're going to send Stubbs in. And it's 2-0. Two times now we're seeing good opposite field approach from the left handed hitters in this Rockies lineup. You saw Blackman open up the game with a double in a similar situation. And here Dickerson in a two strike count going the opposite way. I mean, that's. Guy does that. I mean, that's tough to pitch to. I mean, the pitch was not a hanger either for Petit. It was on the outside corner. Another nice approach for Dickerson. And quickly the Rockies on top to zip. Here's Rutledge. Rutledge takes a strike. Rutledge hitting 256. Three for three yesterday. Scored three runs. Knocked two in. And this is a real weird ground ball hit to panic, and that's going to end the inning. So the Rockies draw first blood after one to nothing Colorado.
His big play the Togo's way. Hunter Pence on May 22nd, he had a home run off of Franklin Morales in the fourth inning. That was a big fly. And then three months later, Hunter Pence with an RBI double in the eighth inning to knock in what would be the winning run. And that's our Togo's big play. And here's Hunter Pence. Pence hitting 295. And he hits a very high fly ball to right. Blackman is moving over towards the line and he'll make the catch. One out. And that'll bring up Blanco. Blanco hit a home run off of Jordan Lyles when the Rockies were in San Francisco less than a week ago. Overall hitting 252. Blanco one for four with an RBI yesterday. And a strike in its own one. Andrew Susak is on deck. And Blanco Tardy, nothing in two. One thing about this ballpark as an offense, you have to be patient. If you get down early in a ball game, two, three, four runs, you, you just have to be patient. You have to have grinding at bats. Opportunity will present itself in this in this ballpark. It just does. It's just the way this ballpark plays. And you have to be patient. Take pitches. Get walks. Make a pitcher work. And Blanco is going to rope one into right field for a base hit. Nice two out approach or two two strike approach. Well, the Giants are in the thick of another playoff race for October baseball. If you're looking for access to Giants postseason tickets, it's easy. Get on deck right now. You can become a 2015 season ticket member. Your $500 deposit will give you the opportunity to purchase all the potential division series home playoff games. And a possible wild card play in game. Giants reps are standing by. Call 415 972 2298 or go to sfgiants.com slash season. Here's Susak. Susak getting 277. A couple of home runs, 12 driven in. And he'll look at a strike in its own one. Blanco has got 14 steals. Brandon Crawford on deck. Even though the Giants had two base runners on in the first, the hit by Blanco, the first in the game for them. Blanco's going to smooth out the running lanes for him. One one to Susak. And a little bit low. One ball and one strike. You can see Lyle's trying to pitch for that ground ball. He got a double play in the first. Well, when he's on top and he's got knee cut knee high command, he can get ground balls. I mean he's got good sink. Got a quick little slider that's got downward burn on it. I mean, and both those pitches produce ground balls. And for a big guy, he gets rid of the ball pretty quick. So he will give Jackson Williams, the catcher, a chance should Blanco get a little froggy and decide to steal here. Oh. 
And there's a strike. Susek maybe not in agreement. It's one and two. I remember the first pitch of this at bat was up around the belt. This one he thought was a little bit below the knees. That's a big zone. So basically, in a one two count, those two pitches called against you, you better be hacking here. Got him. And even Bruce Boach is going, seriously? It can be a big zone at times with Vanover. Set up on the outside. Nice little frame job there by Jackson Williams. And he is a good framer. And that's a nice little tuck in on the inside corner. And I think that way that he received it got that strike. And that's an example of how catchers can help pitchers. Here's Crawford. Crawford, a very nice day yesterday. Went three for four. Had three runs batted in. Feel straight away for Brandon Crawford and uh, the 1 0 pitch. And there's a strike. Take a look at this pitch that was the payoff pitch a slider and really just backed up. It didn't do anything. And perhaps that's what fooled Susak on the pitch. But even though Bochi thinking that pitch was inside and up. Hey, sometimes a backup slider can be a great yeah. pitch. You get the spin of a slider and it doesn't do anything. It comes at you straight. Crawford a mighty swing and a foul back. It's one and two. Rocky scored two in the bottom of the first inning. We used to play catch in the outfield and try to throw backup sliders. Rolled over to LeMahieu, and that's going to end the inning. How'd that go? That good. Rockies coming up. 2 nothing, Colorado. U verse rewind. We go back to Thursday. Giants taking on the Rockies. It's Yusmero Petit on the mound, and in that particular game, he would set the major league record for most consecutive batters, retiring 46 in a row. And the strikeout of Charlie Coberson allowed him to establish a new major league record. And that's our AT&T U verse rewind. Here's LeMahieu, and he takes wide one ball and no strikes. 
LeMahieu hitting at 261, four home runs, 34 runs batted in. Jackson Williams on deck. Two and oh. LeMahieu's two for ten against Yosmero Petit. And a strike, so Petit comes back in when he had to. Petit, everything out of the stretch. Very compact motion. Very easy to repeat it. Reliable. And that's over Buster Posey. And right off the bat, Petit gives up a base hit to the leadoff hitter here in the second. You see some more notes on the most consecutive batters retired. He passed up Mark Burley, who had the record. Bobby Jenks, our old friend Jim Barr. And Jim Barr had the National League record. The, the guy that broke up the streak of 46 straight was Jordan Lyles. And he's on deck. Here's Jackson Williams. And the first pitch is wide, one ball and no strikes. LeMayhew has attempted 17 steals this year. He's been success successful eight times, been thrown out nine times. Tap to Sandoval, tricky hop, stays with it in the dirt. Buster Posey digs it, and uh, Williams is retired. LeMahieu moves into scoring position. That had a little personality on both sides. Sandoval getting after it quickly, but he realizes he's going to have to choke this thing off. Gets the hop here, and then he throws to the right of Posey on the one hop. So a nice backhand dig on the. Ball down in the dirt from Posey. So they do get the one out. It's, it is a productive out. But nice play from both sides. For if you're an infield, you want to go and hug your first baseman on a play like that. Here's Lyles, who's a pretty good hitter, as Petit will chase LeMahieu back to second. Yeah, Lyles hit 216 with a home run and three ribeyes. Two doubles. One ball and no strikes. Lyles eight for 37. And one for two lifetime against Petit. Two nothing. Colorado. And it's high, so it's two and oh. We are already in the second inning. Is it the second inning already? Second inning. It has been a slow paced game. Lots of pitches for both starting pitchers. And a strike. Two balls and one strike. You made a point yesterday about injuries. Rockies are always hit with injuries. And your point was that maybe it's because the innings are so long. Maybe they're standing around a lot. A lot of pitches in these games. See a lot of three hour plus ball games in this ballpark. Two and two. I mean, a day like yesterday where you have a suspended game, you have to play an hour and 15 minutes of one game. I mean, it's not a pure doubleheader, but it's a long day. And then you go into a three hour, what was it, 47 minutes, I think the game 44. was? I mean, that's a long time on your feet, and it's the first week of September. April, maybe not so bad. Legs are fresh. September, it's an issue. Got him. 
threw him a breaking ball, and here's Blackman. Third strikeout for Petit this first time through the lineup. The old equalizer. Uh, good location, too. <laughs> Perfect. He didn't have a big break on his slider, but it, it's quick, it's late, and normally it's got pretty good tilt on it. Doubled in the first inning and scored the first Rockies run. Well, three of the four Rockies hits have been opposite field hits. And I think that's the approach that they talked about given the last time they they saw Ismero Petit was just five days ago in San Francisco, so they know him well. We see really good opposite field execution from the Rockies. Well, Larry Vanna were going to come out and break this rock pile up, and all of a sudden, it, well, he, did, he didn't think it was going to be a long meeting, and then he will run the game. The old umpires, not a problem with that. LeMahieu at second. And a high fastball, 1 and 0. Blackman was pretty much over 300 for the most part of the year. Made the All Star team. And here he takes in tight 2 and 0. They may be pitching around him. Well, I mean, that's not a bad idea given the year that he's had 17 homers and 66 RBIs. You've got Rafael Noah, who's in his second day of the big leagues. So who would you rather face? This was the winning hit for Blackman. See the location. Bruce Bochy said Romo threw a pretty good pitch. Well, they set the target away. It came down. It was down below the strike zone, but it was down and in. He just dropped the bat hit on it. That was his sixth at bat in a nine inning ball game. And up until that point, he was 0 for 5. Charlie Blackman shaved his beard. And stood in this room, I wouldn't recognize him. Tap foul, two and two. Nice changeup. Totally took out the legs of Charlie Black. He might make. The all beard team is the right fielder. Yeah, I'm thinking he's got a good chance. To see a lot of full beards around baseball this year. Although Jason Worth plays right field. I don't know about that one. Yeah. I gotta go with Worth. And that'll end the inning. So pitch around Blackman? I don't think so. Third inning coming up. Petit will leave things off.
on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by PG&E. See our progress in your town at pge.com slash progress. The Steinbergs are here looking to do a little scorekeeping here in the third inning with Esmeralda Petit to lead things off. Steinbergs have seen every Giants game on the road this year. Petit, can he beat this out? No. <laughs> I don't think so. He, uh, he doesn't have a hit yet. I was trying to help him out. 0 for 17, 10 strikeouts. He's due. So here's Pagan. Dodgers, Nationals to start. Maybe about 40 minutes. And that's a start for Clayton Kershaw. As this is rolled to Morneau. Two outs. And that'll bring up Joe Panic. Panic drew a walk in the first inning. Look at that Phillies Atlanta score. It's two nothing. It's in the eighth inning. First thing I looked at was, do the Braves have any hits? They do. They have three. The reason I bring that up is yesterday, Phillies no hit them. A combined four pitcher no hitter. But they've yet to score a run off the Phillies. Here's the 0 1 to panic. And it's just slow and maybe away. Brewers. Cubs are leading the Brewers four to one. That game is in the fourth inning. Tough times now for the Brew Crew. As we look at their numbers, they've lost six straight and they're not in first place anymore. And they lost their center fielder, Carlos Gomez. Panic bounces this one past Roberto Kelly. Yeah, they saw something on Twitter where it could be two weeks. He's kind of like the energy guy on that team. He's got up what, 27 stolen bases, 20 plus home runs, and now all of a sudden he's hurt. That's a lot of energy at the top of your lineup. You're going to miss. And got hurt in San Francisco. Panic out swinging, and that's going to end the inning. It remains two nothing, Colorado.
Giants loss of Coors Field. 7-2 here isn't that big of a lead. You want to go to the ninth inning with a lead because, I mean, you can't give up a broken bat homer, or you can give up a broken bat homer here. Yes, you can. This place is spooky. He has never had a win here, which is hard to believe. He's 5-2 and two lifetime against him away from Coors Field. But 0-2 here with an ERA in the seventh. And that, for a pitcher of his caliber, is hard to believe. It's five innings, seven hits, six runs, five earned yesterday. As you know, it takes down low. One ball and no strikes. Morneau to follow and then Stubbs. Bounces this one to Buster Posey. And Buster will take it himself. Well, next Tuesday, step up to the plate night. And it's a special event package that includes a limited edition bobblehead of Javier Lopez, a strong supporter of the fight against poverty. Reminder you need a special ticket for this event. Call 415 972 2298. Here's Morneau. Morneau struck out looking in the first. And he takes low, one ball and no strikes. On deck is Drew Stubbs. And this is hit on the ground at Panic. Two outs. And here's Stubbs. One of the fastest guys in the game right here. Let's take a look at the one hop bullet right to Joe Panic. Nice little Sunday hop above the belt. Thank you very much. Stubbs hit a ball in the hole that Crawford backhanded. Could not throw him out. It did extend the inning. And then Dickerson had the double to knock in Blackman and Stubbs. Off the plate, two balls and no strikes. And is that a breaking ball? Yeah, nice tight little slider. I mean, it doesn't look like the altitude's really affected his slider that much. I mean, when it's down at sea level, it's it's not much bigger than what you saw, if big at all. Deep to left, on the line, and it one hops the wall, and Stubbs has got a double. Well, one thing Drew Stubbs could always do when he was in a Reds uniform was make you pay if you made a mistake up. He had that happy zone. It was like middle of the plate away, right at the belt, and he would just wear you out. And he top spins this thing, and that's where the Giants catch a break. If he gets backspin on it, it's out of here by a bunch. That ball was was flushed, a hanging slider, and that thing didn't do anything. That that is on a tee right there. Head stays down nice through the swing, but they catch a break there. So here's that man again. It's Dickerson. And Dickerson takes wide. Petit. About to throw pitch number 49. 
He was on his way to a really nice clean inning until the double by Stubbs. And that pitch is in tight. Two and oh. Ryan Vogelsong tomorrow against Christian Bergman. And now Dickerson's going to take the walk. No problem with that. Dickerson, a product of the Rockies farm system. Eighth round pick of the 2010 draft. Sent out of junior college. Meridian City College in Mississippi. Now he's a good player. Here's Rutledge. Rutledge rolled out to second to end the first inning. Talked about how tough these games are here at Coors Field. And one of the th many things Bruce Bochy said in his office today was two more games here and we're done. Yeah, you, you count those off. One thing that Petit has not helped himself out with tonight is that first strike. Just three for 15 with first pitch strikes. Hit into the gap. Nobody's going to get it. Stubbs is going to score. Dickerson is going to score. Rutledge is going to hit the bag at second, and he's got a triple. And it's 4 0. Well, one thing we have seen so consistent all night is great opposite field hitting. Well, yeah, that's, that's a pitch that's up, but they're not greedy and just finding the opposite gap. And the opposite field hitting is what has done the teed in to this point. You see teams consistently do that. I mean, you have to make an adjustment if you're the pitcher on the mound. You got to start pitching in because you're throwing that ball away, and they're going the opposite way with it. But clearly, they're only looking on one side of the plate. So here's Lemayhew. You know, and, and this is where you're a little disadvantaged with the young catcher because they do not adjust. Within the game as quickly as a veteran catcher will do you'll have a game plan as to how you want to pitch guys pretty much the same way they pitched them in San Francisco. But the Rockies have really made nice adjustments tonight based on what they saw from Petit in his last outing in San Francisco. He got him out of way. Today they've been looking for a way but they've been going away and that's the key. And that is what has really caused Petit some problems when they make that adjustment you have to adjust back and you got to start using that inside corner. Hit well to left. Blanco back. Gone. And now it's a four run inning. And it's six to nothing. And LeMahieu with his fifth of the year. And he got a big old hanging slider. Second one this inning that has been costly to Petit. Look at the pitch right up at the belt out over the middle. And the Mayhew said yeah, that's where I like him. It's the big line drive and watch the reaction from Petit. So here's Jackson Williams. Give you an idea how fast it happens. Two ground balls two quick outs. Nobody on. Double intentional walk, triple big fly. And 17 pitches this inning and four runs. One ball and no strikes. Starting to stretch out the Giants bullpen a little bit. There's a lot of young pitchers out there waiting for that phone to ring. Sandoval's got it on the backhand. His throw is perfect, and that's going to end the inning. 
Well, Giants know what they got to do. They need base runners. They need a couple of big flies. They need some runs. Six nothing. On Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Supercuts. Rock the cut. Six nothing Colorado. That's right. Through three innings. And Buster Posey will lead things off. And all you can do is shake your head. You know you've made some mistakes to location. But don't worry about that tomorrow. Goes back out there again. He's got to start getting that ball down and he's got to start getting on top of these Rockies 0 1. Oh. Strike to Buster Posey. Buster hit a ball well into right center center field that Stubbs tracked down. And two. Bang, bang. Two fastballs. All the Giants have to do is look back to yesterday. This is rolled to Rutledge. And how the Rockies came back. One out. And here's Sandoval. Well, if there's ever a ballpark that would lead you to believe that a comeback being down six runs. It's not impossible. This is the place, and, they, and they've done that. They they know this place has opportunity offensively. But I think this is a very big inning for the Giants. Down six nothing in this ball game, coming to this part of the lineup. The heart of the Giants lineup, lineup seeing Lyles a second time. So they should have a pretty good idea of what he's got. First pitch change up he waves at. Sandoval with runners at first and third and one out in the first inning. Hit into a 4-6-3 double place. Started very nicely by LeMahieu. He's having a pretty good game so far, that kid. Couple knocks, home run. Yeah. One and two, Sandoval almost lost the bat. Hunter Pence is on deck. Hit out the left for Dickerson. 
That's odd number two. We'll check out Peru ball tonight, 9 p.m. Jim Harbaugh goes to South America. That's right. 49ers head coach Jim Harbaugh took his yearly missionary trip to Peru and Comcast Sports at Bay Area went along. Harbaugh and his group built homes, delivered food, and taught football to boys in the area. Sportsnet Central's Dave Feldman was along for the trip, and he brings you the entire story. So check it out tonight, 9 p.m., right here on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Here's Pence. Pence popped out to right field. Another high pop up that's going to reach the seats. And Pence is now behind in the count, 0 and 2. Atlanta, which is in a wild card race, is trailing the Phillies 4 0. Miami's involved in one. Mets are leading them 8 to 6 in the eighth. One and two to Pence. Milwaukee. They're involved in a lot of things, including the wild card race, and they're losing at Wrigley Field. Here's the one two to Pence. And Pence takes low again, two and two. Pence trying to get on for Gregor Blanco. And it's not going to happen here in the fourth. Lyles will lead things off 6 nothing, Colorado. of the San Francisco Giants and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates LLC. Well the Dodgers make their final regular season stop at AT&T Park next weekend Friday September 12th it's Orange Friday Saturday the, Saturday the 13th is a 605 start and come out early to attend the Fiesta Gigantes presented by Coors Live from 3 to 6 on Terry Francois Boulevard and Sunday's game a 105 start start so the Giants Dodgers teen it up again do not miss this classic rivalry series tickets are available go to sfgiants.com slash tickets yep they've been to a couple of yeah Giants Dodgers games keep the faith it's just the fourth here's Lyles Lyles struck out in the second Blackman and then he know scheduled three to hit here in the fourth. This is headed in our direction. Yeah, it hit me in the hands.
That was not a good sound. <laughs> no. If you have infielders that are behind you when you're playing and the ball hits their hands and it sounds like that, yeah. ask to be traded. Time out. A little low. Two balls in one strike. All right, let's listen. Point. Oh, <laughs> thanks for the sound effect. Wow. Two and two, not a Lyles. I don't know if we've ever gotten one up in this booth. That's probably as close as it's come. So Petit strikes out Lyles for the second time. That's Michael Kickham in the bullpen getting loose. So here's Blackman. Black one hits one high and far and foul. Sound like kick, but kick up out in the Giants bullpen. He he was called up yesterday. Today the Giants added five more call ups. We talked about Brett Bochy, the son of Bruce Bochy, the pitcher. Gary Brown called up. Eric Cordier, right handed pitcher. Adam Duvall back up after a week. And Chris Heston, a right handed pitcher, had a nice year for the Grizzlies. And Fresno. One and one to Blackman, a double in the first, strikeout victim in the second. Here he bounces this one to Buster Posey. Two outs. When you get down in a game six nothing, like Petit is here in the fourth inning, I mean, a lot of guys cannot maintain their concentration. Their mind is already in the box score of tomorrow's paper as to how bad it's going to look. Six earned runs is a bad night. But you've got to forget it. Make your adjustments and just keep pitching. Especially at a ballpark like this, you never know. Your offense may pick you up. Well, you're right. You. The only way you come back in this game is you have to shut down. You can't let the Rockies score much more. There's panic. He's going to make the play, and that'll end the inning. Oh, and then you have to score some runs, too. That would be nice.
hashtag CSN BA fan photo name and hometown for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It was brought to you by AT&T. Here's Jeremiah Burroughs. He's from Dayton Nevada. He's four years old and he likes us and we appreciate that Jeremiah. Now see if you can work on your parents. <laughs> well yeah, I think he's being raised right. Here's Blanco who has the only hit in the game for the Giants. The Giants have not made Lyles work with the exception of the first inning. Yeah, Lyles dug a little hole in that first inning with a walk hit bat, or hit batsman and a walk. The Giants could not capitalize. This is hit up the middle. Rutledge dives and comes up empty and Blanco's two for two. So that's a start. And when you read the papers tomorrow, it'll, it'll say it all started with that hit by Gregor Blanco. It all started with a hit back up the middle off the bat of Gregor Blanco. Here's Susak. Susak struck out looking in the second inning. Uh, you're down six nothing in a ball game. It, it really takes one big line drive, a loud one that wakes up the, the bench. Slowly hit, and the play is going to be made at first by Enoa. And at this point, I guess you make sure you get it out, and that's what Enoa did. So here's Crawford. Crawford bounced out to second. Travis Ishikawa's on deck. Swing and a miss by Crawford. Lyles a little extra. That was at 93. Well, he's doing a very nice job of mixing his first pitches. He's throwing the slider, the changeup, both types of fastball. He's basically showing the Giants that he could get all of his pitches over. And he has located them well. Crawford fouls it back, nothing in two. Who knows? The kid might get in the game today. It could happen. No balls and two strikes. Outside to Crawford, one and two. Brett Bochy putting down his water bottle, sitting next to Tim Litscomb on the right of your screen, the left of Tim Litscomb, Hunter Strickland. Saw Strickland make his debut last night, hard thrower. Then there's George Contos. It gets tough to find a place on the bench sometimes in September with all the call ups. There was a time when you had to share a locker and not a big locker. There's a time you got a nail <laughs> on the wall. That was your locker. There you go. Hey, it didn't matter. You're in the big leagues. Here it's two and two to Crawford. Crawford stays alive. Bought off a nasty pitch. Miles has thrown 57 pitches. Here he takes a peek at Blanco, and it's a full count. So the Giants will take a walk and take base runners. Oh, any base runner they can get right now, down six. And if you're Jordan Lyles, you got to think, well, I have to make this guy swing the bat with a six-run lead. 
crooked numbers happen quickly here at Coors Field. And Crawford got a piece, but it's held on by Williams. And that'll bring up Duvall. Ishikawa pull back. 3 2 challenge. I hear hit me fastball ride right the belt. Just catches a piece of it. And Williams hangs on. So here's Duvall. Had a great year at, at Fresno. I mean, he missed a lot of time. Almost a month. So in four months of a minor league season, 27 home runs, 90 RBIs, hit a 298. I think Bruce Bochy wants one thing here. Yeah. And that's to see if he can knock one out of the yard. One ball and no strikes. So Petit's night is over. He will not be happy with the results tonight. One ball and one strike. Pagan on deck. Blanco led the inning off with a base hit. Fifth inning. It's good sinker. I mean, he's mixing up that that movement on that fastball beautifully. Yeah, he is. Four seam the inside corner, the one away. Then he comes back the inside corner with two seam movement, and that two seam movement has movement running into the right handed hitter. Very subtle, but very effective. A lot of guys to swing at that last pitch. The ball waiting him out, putting on a good at bat. Second three ball count in a row here that Lyles is featured. He may come out of his shoes on this one. <laughs> You're right. Three balls and one strike at Coors Field. A young hitter waiting to see a fat one, and the ball's going to look for that right here. The tip of Morno's glove. Blanco's going to score, and Duvall knocks in the first run for the Giants. Nice at bat. That may be the wake up call that Bruce Bochy was waiting for. We're going to make it our Ford right choice. Why not? Just gets back up the big leagues today after a week. 3 1 count. Not getting greedy. Taking the outside location. Going to right field with it. Beautiful at bat. The reward an RBI, a knock, and. You set it up for Angel Pagan. Our Ford right choice. Pagan hit by a pitch in the first, bounced out in the third. And he takes a strike. Pagan came into the game three for six lifetime against Lyle, so he had a little bit of ownage. On Jordan Lyles. And a base hit to left field. That's a Pagan special right there. And here's Panic. It's it's pure it's pure hitting. I mean that's not a hanger. That is anything but a hanger. This is a good location pitch. They set the target down and away, and it's right to the glove with some fuzz working away from the left-handed hitting Pagan. And just lets his body put himself in a position to use his hands. And that's outstanding bat head control, just flipping it into left field. I mean that is something he has worked very hard at to, to develop. 
we've seen him do that a bunch since he's put on a Giants uniform. Nice at bat. And he extends it for panic. So panic will try to extend it for Buster Posey. That's how you get back in these games. Joe Panic walked in the first, struck out in the third. And he takes low, one ball and no strikes. Does not help you. Very, very knowledgeable in the strike zone, disciplined in the strike zone. Here's the pitch. And he pulls it foul. Hit sharply. One ball and one strike. 68 pitches on the night. And this is the one inning they're really starting to extend the pitch count on Lyles. On the ground towards the hole. LeMayhew spins and throws and they got him. And that'll end the inning. A run on three hits two left. A little Man. ground ball. It splits the hole. We thought for a second it had a chance to go in. But LeMayhew makes. Of Candlestick Park, you're saying, well, what are you talking about? Well, the orange and red historic seats are now on sale for $7.49 per pair and for a limited time seats autographed by Candlestick Park legends. They're also available, including Mays, McCovey, Montana, Young, Rice. You can get all the information at sfgiants. Oh, and others, sfgiants.com slash candlestick memories. It is a 6-1 lead for the Rockies. When it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune-up and repair experts. And there you see the new pitcher coming out of the bullpen. It'll be Michael Kickham. And those were the numbers for Kickham in Fresno. Remember, the Giants saw Kickham last year a number of different times. And uh, the Giants think that he's made progress in Fresno. So here he is facing Justin Morneau. 
And Morneau takes a pitch inside. Morneau is 0 for 2. When Kickup's right, you're going to see four pitches. Two types of fastballs, low 90 with a velocity, curveball slider, and he will throw a changeup. He's got a little bit of an upright finish. And a little bit of funk to his delivery. Likes the third base side of the rubber. Hit to right. Not much on it, and it's going to fall in front of Pence. Time to log on to CSNBarrier.com and you can decide the player of the game. The winner will be revealed during Giants post game live. Check out the action on the diamond like never before with Bloomberg stats. Giants in game live now on CSNBarrier.com. You can vote now. So here's Stubbs. Stubbs is two for two. He scored twice. Last time Kickham was in the big leagues, I mean, he, he had a few lumps come his way. It's important he finds confidence early in this game. Well, the other thing, too, Mike, this is a, a winnable game. He's not mopping up here. No, no, he's got to throw some zeros up there. This is important. And a strike. It's two balls and one strike. He's also throwing to a kid that has caught him before. And then I think that's the biggest help that he has. He's got a nice anchor there with Susak behind the plate. Last year, Kickham got called up. He made three starts at 12 appearances at the big league level. Hit back to kick him. To panic. Not much of a chance with that guy running. You better be perfect. And the throw to panic a little low. Yeah, it sort of took away the rhythm of panic. Kind of snagged the bat. He had to reach back. And with Stubbs, you're just not going to get a second chance. You know, that's for the right side, too. But he's one of the fastest guys in baseball. You got to keep him close because he will steal. He's got 16 steals on the year. He's been thrown out three times. And a soft toss to Buster Posey. Talk about those 12 games that Kickham was in last year at the big league level. He went 0 and 3 with an ERA of 10.16. He had 32 earned runs in 28 and a third inning. So he. he Got some education. Basically went down to Fresno this year, had a good solid season. It's eight and eight with a four four three ERA. But started toying around with two different types of fastball grips. Started throwing more off speed stuff and fastball counts. Learn how to pitch the situation, how to get ground balls, when to pitch for ground balls, when to pitch for strikeouts. And that's rolled foul. So he comes back, one ball and one strike. And sort of get an idea as to what it's like to pitch to contact. Contact's not a bad thing. If you could take the hitter's balance out of the swing, all things you learn. But you got to throw innings to learn them. Education in professional baseball comes at a high price. It really does. Out of play, it's one and two. Kick him last year, showed up. His hair was much longer. Just an observation. That's all. I look, just saw Lincecum. His hair is long again. Let's get longer. And Stubbs goes, and Susak has no chance. And he 
you got to give your catcher a chance. Kick him in a one two count, thinking more about watch the high leg kick. 1.53 unload time for Kickham. That's very slow, and you can see the result. An easy steal for Stubbs. Kickham will chase Stubbs back. I mean, Stubbs is thinking, well, that was pretty easy. I may have to try it again. And with one out, you got to prevent that from happening. And a base hit into center field. Pagan gets to it. They're going to wave in Stubbs, and the throw is late. And down to second goes Dickerson. Once Pagan missed the cutoff man, and Bruce Bochy's coming out. And it's going to be George Contos. But it's time for a change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. We'll be back. And now George Cantos is going to try to slow things down. Let's take a look at the numbers for George Cantos. Been kind of a yo-yo year for George Cantos back and forth, but he's been here. He's been good. 27 base runners at 23 and two-thirds, almost a strikeout an inning, and almost a three-to-one strikeout ratio. And look what he's done to lefties: 171. Cantos will give you two types of fastball: velocity low 90s, changeup in a hard slider. It is his bread and better. It is a no dot slider, but with a different tilt. It's not flat like Romo's. It's got a straight down bite to it. Much different pitcher than we first saw when Cantos made his first appearance at the big league level. He was kind of a two pitch guy then, and he rode that slider hard. Oh, yeah. Look at all those names. All the names of the call ups definitely fill out a scorecard. One that the skipper will sign each day. Billy Hayes is the gentleman with the responsibility of of the deep penmanship. So Gantos facing Rutledge. Brett Bochy in the ready position. And Rutledge skies one down the right field line. Hunter Pence is going to run out of room. Mm -hmm. 
seven one Rockies fifth inning. Rutledge knocked in a pair with a triple in the third. He takes low. Dickerson with his lead at second. And he'll steal. You got to watch him. And this is a shot right at Sandoval. Not a whole lot is fooling Rutledge right now. He's hitting the ball hard, even with his outs. He measured out of that slider there and was not fooled by it at all. Sandoval, not even time for a step. All he could do is just sort of fall towards it. So an out of ball. And Rutledge retired. He's one of the Panda people. Yep. Don't get discouraged. And there's no yawning in baseball, by the way. <laughs> I wish you would have told me that before this started. Doesn't include broadcasters. LeMahieu hit a home run. Off of Petit in the third inning. Dickerson with his lead. Nothing in two. This was a home run. Yeah, he he breaking ball. Hanger deed right there at the belt. We haven't seen Ismero Petit throw many of these all year, but this particular instance he did and got burned for it. Owen oh, two to LeMayhew. And that's down low, one and two. And Williams is on deck. And it's down low, so it's two and two. Philadelphia does indeed shut out Atlanta. Mets beat Miami. Cubs now add on to their lead over Milwaukee at 7 1. Kind of a blood series between the Cardinals and the Pirates. St. Louis leading that game 5 2 in the sixth in St. Louis. Sandoval gives ground and throws him out. Cantos slows everything down. Buster Posey's going to lead things off at 7 1 in Colorado.
away game. Here in Denver, it'll be on the air at 11:30. That's when pregame live is going to start, and then we'll have the ball game for you right at noon. And you can see it right here on Comcast Sports Net Bay Area. Ryan Vogelsong, he will take the hill against Christian Bergman. They offer the Giants on Thursday and then Detroit for three games. 7-1 Rockies. The attitude seems to be holding up here by our Giants fans as Buster Posey stands in. And the pitch is low to Buster Posey. He's flied out and bounced out. First time back for the Giants since they won the World Championship in 2012. And Giants won that 2010 championship in Texas. They haven't been back. Next year. Low to Buster Posey. Maybe. Maybe. Giants play the American League West next year. We haven't seen the schedule yet. They know they're going to play the Rangers. They just don't know where. Taking it all the way, Buster Posey, three and one. He will not take this one if he likes it. Hit well to left. Back and out of here. And it's seven to two. Home run number 19 for Buster Posey. That was loud. Ahead the count. That count leverage for Buster Posey right now is a mistake if you're a pitcher. He comes in, boom, unloads, middle in. And he may be the toughest guy in the game to jam right now. now I know this is in the strike zone, but still stand inside it. A knob lead just flicked his wrist and out she goes. Home run number 19. Here's Sandoval. And a strike. Sandoval is 0 for 2. Miles right back in the strike zone. This pop up is playable. And it's going to be LeMahieu. One out. And now West, two back, coming into today's action. Giants are to the Dodgers. And in the wild card, the Giants have that first spot. Brewers are second. Pirates and Braves, two back of that second spot. Well, Braves lost today. Pirates losing. Brewers losing. So, opportunity here for the Giants. They need to start making some more. There's a base hit. Well, it, start. it just looks so easy here. It's ridiculous. It, it, it really does. I said they have to, I was about to say they have to start making more opportunities, and just like that, boom, they do. This, I don't care how many runs you're you're behind. You're in the game. This is Coors Field. We saw with two outs how quickly the Rockies put a four spot on the board the third inning. Yeah, now you start paying attention to the hitting streak. Fifteener. Blanco's two for two. And he jumps back. It's one ball and no strikes. Andrew Susak is on deck. And a strike. Blanco was taken on that 1 0 pitch. He wasn't taken. He wasn't looking middle away. It may have been that Blanco asked for time. Wouldn't be the first time that he did that. 
Williams now wants to go out and have a word. Just go out and get an idea squared away. And it may be about location. Maybe after he took that 1 0 pitch, Williams went out there and said, Let's just stay away. This guy's looking middle end. Blanco seeing him well with his two hits already tonight. So you know he's confident in the batter's box. Way outside, and it's kicked around. And Hunter Pence thought about it. It's two balls and one strike. You will not be doing the game Friday night, correct, in Detroit? I will not. I will not be traveling to Detroit. Do you? I don't know. What is the etiquette? If you are not, do you have to find somebody to replace yourself? Yes. Well, I, I leave that up to you. And you have found a good replacement. Line drive caught. Unbelievable. Oh, Blanco hit it right on the nose. Great at bat right there, and a beautiful play from the rookie Rafael Inoa. Last night we saw Inoa at second base. Here he comes in to play third with Arenado get a night off. Beautiful opposite field hitting. And just a full laid out parallel to the ground spear job by Inoa to deny the hit. That was extra bags. So here's Susak. So Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson's going to be doing the game with John and I on Friday. I can't wait to ask Brian. We saw Williams go out to talk to Lyles. If any pitcher ever said no, don't come out now. I think I'm good. Just stay there. Yeah. Halt. We've seen it. Rick Russell was the best at it. Susak down the right field line and out of play. We saw it with Fernando Valenzuela to Tommy Lasorda, the manager. This is Tommy's thing. We're good. Whoa. Lasorda hopped out of the Dodger dugout in L.A. Valenzuela on the mound. Got about three steps from the dugout. And Valenzuela put the hand up and said, we're good. Sorta turned around and back in the dugout. Yeah, I think Tommy realized that, that 65,000 were there to see Valenzuela. And not Tommy. And not Tommy. Susak stays alive. It stays at 0-2. Took a little swing out. I think that's the one adjustment you have to have the ability to have up here. You have to be able to take some swing out. Put the ball in play. Use the middle of the field. Pure technique. Not always easy to do for a guy like Susak who has power. Hit high and deep to left. And it is out of here. And now they're back in it. Susak with his third of the year. And it's 7 4. It was a big boy. That was a big boy. And that's a two strike swing. And look at the location. Middle end, they set the target away, and Lyles flipped the glove. He knew immediately. As soon as it leaves the bat head, this is this is not coming back. So yeah. here's Crawford. That was halfway up the bleachers. Crawford takes low. Still no activity. In the Rockies bullpen. And with that being said, now they're getting up. Crawford chases and misses one ball and one strike. One and two. Well, he swings and misses at it. Why not come right back and throw the same thing?
Crawford in a battle one two. Two balls two strikes. Well, that's been the key in this and two strike at bats. See it's a good one especially from that guy right there. To two pitch here it is to Crawford. And Crawford a little pop up out of play so he lives to see another pitch. I'm not sure he's seeing Lyles that great. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, he's seen a lot of pitches tonight. That was fastball, pretty good pitch to hit, and he was tardy on it. We saw a 3 2 challenge that was a pretty good pitch to hit. He swung through and missed. And he's been swinging the bat well. And he got him, and that'll end the inning. Buster Posey hits his 19th. And Andrew Susak hits his third. And it's bye bye, baby. 7 4 Rockies. is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers, offering business and personal insurance, employee benefits, and financial services. Visit us at hefins.com and by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. Well, here we are in beautiful Denver, and it's a 7-4 lead now for the Rockies. Two guys that left the yard in the top of this inning Buster Posey and Andrew Susak the catcher combo although tonight Posey put on another hat where a different glove playing first base it'll be Jackson Williams to lead things off and then we're going to see well are we going to see a pinch hitter or not well, I wouldn't be surprised. Pitch count starting to get high and the contact starting to get loud. No, Lyles is out there. What do I know? Hey. A strike oh, to Williams. I'm right with you on it. Sandoval has made two really nice plays against Jackson Williams. It's almost as if Sandoval doesn't like him. You know they know each other. This is hit on the ground to panic. So here's Lyles. Lyles has struck out twice. I think he just said something to Susak like seriously. You're supposed to hit that pitch out. And Susek smiled at him. 
I don't think I've ever seen that before. Guy just takes you deep. Try to ignore that guy. There's a strike. In tight to Lyles. Pretty good hitter. Eight for 37 coming into the game. Yeah, it was a power, too. Home run at two doubles. You saw the one double that broke up the consecutive. Man, we tired in a row by Petit. Good slider there. Looks like Kato's has got a pretty good snapper tonight. Not an easy pitch to have perform well in this environment. Course friendly. It's not slider friendly. Blackman is on deck. We're in the home half of the sixth inning. And he got him. Hunto's first strikeout. And here's Blackman. Another breaking ball. Good hard slider. Locked him up. That's three strikeouts tonight for Lyles. That one impressed him. Blackman opened up the bottom of the first with a double. And then after that, he struck out and he bounced out. And the first pitch to Blackman is a ball. One no, ball and no strikes. That looked like it was a two seed fastball. He just took a little little off, or it could have been a changeup. Movement was going away from Blackman, and that's that's a new pitch for Contos this year. One ball and one strike. Here's Contos in the 1 1 pitch. It off the screen, it's 1 and 2. Final game tomorrow. And then we can say goodbye to Coors Field until. Does this sound right? 2015? Yeah. This is it. 2015. One and two to Blackman. Ball back again. You know, it's amazing how much faster a year goes by, though, when your team wins. When your team doesn't win, that season has a tendency to get very slow. Yep. There's two guys that are going to pitch in Detroit. Actually, all three of those guys are going to pitch in Detroit. PV Hudson, Bub Garner. Up and in, two and two. It's a big zero that Kanto's trying to put up right here, shut down inning after his team got three in the top of the sixth. Trying to keep that momentum in the Giants' dugout. Back on that one. There's Lopez getting loose. Now this is a, a rookie catcher. Now this is why we he, the stock in Andrew Susak is so high. He called two changeups. Both times Kantos shook it off. He finally gave in, called the slider that Kantos wanted. Then Kantos hung him. And I think the message he came out there was, "Look, I know you shook off the changeups, 
But don't quit on the slider. Finish that thing up. If you want to throw that thing, throw it. I'm just suggesting. Now, he may have also suggested that you throw that, that change up. It's a good one. We'll set that target away. He may chase with two and two count. Outside, three and two. And there was that change up away. Yep. I think Rob Manfred's first move as the commissioner is to tell Dinger out from behind home plate. <laughs> out. You sound like Bob Gebhardt, who was the general manager when Dinger first showed up here in Colorado. He was not a big Dinger fan. Oh, I think Dinger's fine. Just get out of the center field shot. Period. Hey, he's got advertisement on his back now. Would look really good in the bleachers. Yeah, the rock pile up above center field. I'm Three two you. pitch. Here it is. Ball back. And you know, Dinger, look, he's paying attention to the game. Yeah. Well, he, that's his job, though. And he's got an audience. And that's why they have Dinger. And they love him here. Oh, I get it. Dinger's got a pocket full of autographed pictures. Three and two. This is a course field special until Crawford runs it down. Nice play. You sp start to expect those if you're a hitter here. Back to the infield. Jerry Rice style. Very nice. Seventh inning coming up. You by your local Toyota dealer. Rockies bounced out to a big lead. It's now 7 4. Petit left after four innings. Lyles is still in. Dickerson's had a big night. And Buster Posey and Andrew Susak have hit home runs. Also, Blanco's had a nice night. Here's Duffy. And Duffy hits a slow roller to third. And you know it is going to throw him out. One pitch, and Duffy's gone. That's when you're walking back and you're saying to yourself, I sat around for that. <laughs> well, <laughs> one pitch, I'm gone. Well, you're right. Here's Pagan. Pagan is one for two. One good thing about the big leagues compared to the minor leagues, if that's an at bat in the minor leagues, you're going down the bullpen to catch the bullpen. Yeah. Look out. One ball and no strikes. 
Well, that's true. I mean, it's maybe a good thing to get your mind off of the one pitch at bat, dribbler to third. I know. Those are rough. Two balls and no strikes. It just as rough for a rookie as it is for a 12 year oh, veteran. Are you kidding? Maybe even worse. And a big swing by Pagani. He was trying to hit one in the bullpen. It's two balls and one strike. Yeah, he had a little greed in that swing. The God's got three home runs on the year. Well, when he came back, he said he was ready to play, and he has certainly done that. Two and two. That's Matt Belle Isle in the bullpen. There was a time that he pitched in every game. The every game. The Giants played the Rockies. Every day, Matt Bellow. Pagan trying to get something going with one out. And he's going to pop this one just below us. And it remains two and two. Nationals, Dodgers, no score, third inning. Juan Gutierrez up and throwing for the Giants. Fister Kershaw. Pretty good matchup. Yeah, that's a good pitch matchup there. Outside to Angel Pagan. I said it before, the Giants will take a walk here. He walks Pagan, he's out. Pagan fights it off. Yeah, they may have already told him that as he left the dugout. Get a guy on, you're done. And another 3 2 pitch. Here it is. And he walked him. Get it back. Well, Walt Weiss doesn't exactly make these decisions quickly, or he may have made the decision. He just doesn't come out quickly. It looks like he's going to give one more. I'm a little surprised by this. Given the pitch count, and I think if you're the Giants, you have to think that this is a good thing. Guy with 100 pitches in his arm is going to give one more shot. Panic down the left field line. This is trouble. You bet it is. It's going to bounce up against the wall. They're going to hold Pagan at third and into second is Panic with a double. So Wall Weiss rolled the dice and he got burned. But you think about it. Panic a rookie. He's had three at bats in this game. He saw Lyles in San Francisco. He knows him pretty well. And here he goes right with the two seam fastball away and just slices it right down the left field line with some pop. I mean, he almost knocks it out of here. So Lyles is done. When it's time for a change, think speedy, oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune-up and repair experts. We'll be back.
second and third with only one out. The pitcher now for the Colorado Rockies will be Matt Bellisle, 61st time he's come in. Here's his body of work this summer. 38 strikeouts against 18 walks and 58 to third. With Bellisle, you're going to see a low 90s fastball and a slider. He's going to curveball and a changeup. More sliders than curveballs and changeups. 6'4, 225 pound, 34 year old in his ninth year at the big league level. I suppose he did this in the sixth inning. Well, it was a mistake the location middle in he basically made a pay and he's had good success against Bell Lyle in his career four for 12 with a home run. So right out of bed a slider. There you see the left hand numbers, also a couple walks. But they know each other. Pagan at third, Panic at second. 7 4, Colorado. Target is in. And it's one ball and one strike. The way the Posey's been swinging the bat, every time you see a catcher set up inside, you're starting to go, this is a good thing. But very quick to that side of the plate. What do you bet they don't back it up? Going away. Two balls and one strike. So they do have a base here. And they know how hot Posey's been. But you don't know whether they like to walk the tie and run. But when you've got a guy up there who's been as hot as Posey and has had good success against Bell Isle, it may be that Bell Isle is just going to double on him. Well, we'll find out here. It's two and one. And a shot into the gap. And it's going to score two, and Buster Posey's on the move, and he knocks in a pair, and it's 7 6. He can hit. He really can, and he has been absolutely locked in the last six weeks. And this is not a hanger. They go a 2 1 slider. Look at the location right on the outside corner. And look at the lower body, foot down early. Let it travel in and go right with the location and just absolutely splits the gap in right center. And it's a one run game. Jose now is 75 runs batted in on the year. And here's Sandoval, who's 0 for 3. His numbers against Belle Isle, he's 2 for 12. And he pops this one up. So Sandoval is retired. And here's Hunter Pence. Now Pence can try to tie it up. He's at 23 lifetime at bats against Belle Isle, six hits. Remember, he extended his hitting streak to 15 games in his last at bat. Posey at second. Target is in. And it misses one ball and no strikes. Close the book on Jordan Lyles, a starting pitcher for the Rockies. Five earned runs here in the last two innings. Pence had a pitch. And they set that target up and in, and that thing leaked right out over the plate. That was a gift. There you see Lyles. He is the pitcher of record. He could do two things tonight. He could get a no decision or a win. It is a bullpen game for the Rockies.
up the middle, and a base hit. And here comes Buster Posey. Here's the throw. It's offline. The throw to second. Posey's in. He's going to stay at second. And this game is tied. And they've come back, folks. And we talked that there was a place where you could come back from a 6 nothing deficit. It was here. And, boy, six runs here in the last inning and two-thirds. And Hunter Pence going right back up the middle, just under the glove of Belle Isle. And Tim Flannery challenging Drew Stubbs, who's got a good arm, and he cuts one, cut off by Morneau, and they can't get the out at second base. And we have a brand new ball game. Jordan Lyles, you get a workout. Thanks for stopping by. And so does Petit. Giants just pick up Petit. He spits the hook. Here's Blanco. Block goes two for three. His only out was a bullet hit to the third baseman in Noah, who made a really nice play. Blanco has never had a hit against Belle Isle. He's 0 for 8. So that would mean what? That he's due? Yeah, he's due. But the way he's swinging about right now, I mean, he's seeing it big off of everybody. A line drive, and it's past Dickerson. Here comes Pence. Blanco is going to put on the brakes, and the Giants take the lead. Seeing it big against everybody. And really, just another great bat control at bat for Blanco as he finally figures out Belle Isle. His first hit is a big one, and it puts the Giants ahead for the first time tonight. And that's just beautiful hitting. Granted, it's up, but it's moving away. It's on the outside corner. If you try and pull it, you ground it out to the second baseman, and he just pushes it right past Dickerson and left. An easy score for Hunter Pence. And look at the Giants' bench. They are enjoying every bit of it. So Jim Wright out. I mean, this happened so quickly. The Rockies didn't have time to get anybody up. Well, Coors Field, last couple days, has looked like Coors Field. So here's Susak. Remember, Susak, he had a two run home run in the sixth that gave the Giants lots of life. And it's low. One ball and no strikes. Eight, seven Giants here in the seventh inning. Oh. Susette takes it in a call strike. You know, a guy starts to hit the comfort zone when he starts to show a little yeah. negative body language of the umpire. Well, yeah, he didn't. You start to feel like you belong here, and he certainly does. He's playing like it. One and two. Blanco with good speed at second. And now Bell Isles ready. And Susak with a pretty good rip. This was the home run we were talking about. Yeah, it came to two strike count. That's a low finish too for a guy with power. A two strike at bat, and this is halfway up the bleachers. <laughs> that was no cheapy either. 
As soon as he threw it, Jordan Lyles knew, flipped his glove up. One and two. Blocked. Two balls, two strikes. The best part about what's happening right now is this score is going up on the board at Dodger Stadium where the Dodgers are playing the Nationals and are tied 0 0 in the fourth. But remember, the Dodgers also saw that the Rockies were on top of the Giants 6 0. And so it goes when you're scoreboard watching in September. Susak. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Set up in the inside corner, bang, and Jackson Williams does not even move the glove. See, they got a rapport, Susak and Van Over. Here's the 3 2. Hit well into right center field. Blackman, can he get there? He cannot. Here comes Blanco. Susak is going to put on the brakes, and the Giants now lead 9-7. to seven. How about that at bat? I mean, that's a 3-2 at bat with two outs. You talk about money hitting. And just staying inside it, going the opposite gap. And we talk about Drew Stubbs, the center fielder, who has got great range, and he cannot run this one down. And this gets out to the right center field wall quickly. And look at the carry with the backspin. And that's what a flat swing will give you. Have a night, Andrew Susak. Delisle is going to be finished for the night. Nick Massett was warming up. So, as we head for a break, it's 9 7 Giants. At 9 p.m. right on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area, 49ers head coach Jim Harbaugh took his yearly missionary trip to Peru and Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area went along. Harbaugh and his group, well, they built homes, they delivered food, they taught football to boys in the area. Sportsnet Central's Dave Feldman was there. He was along for the whole ride. So check it out tonight, 9 p.m., Peru Ball, Jim Harbaugh in South America. 9-7 Giants. There's Massett. See the numbers for Massett 1 0 with a 5 6 80 RA. Massett, big guy, 6 5, 235 pounder, 32 years old, in his eighth year at the big league level. See a fastball that's low 90s, slider split. Crawford 1 for 2 against Massett lifetime. And there's the first pitch high. One ball and no strikes. I remember Nick Massett with the Cincinnati Reds. Pitch for Cincinnati prior to coming here. Oh, 
Crawford down the right field line. Is this trouble? You bet it is. Here comes Susak. He's going to score. Crawford is busting it for three, and he is going to make it. And it's 10 7. And now nine hits in the last two innings, seven for extra bases. Wow. I mean, that's all you can say is wow. And look at the smiles in that dugout. And take a look at the location pitch from Massett. He goes right middle in above the belt. And Crawford makes him pay for the location mistake. I mean, this is a, a some severe thumping going on right now in regards to the extra base hits. Well, here's Duffy. Duffy started this inning off with a, a one pitch ground ball to third. Yeah, but it got everybody excited in the dugout. And well, he must have. Pagan a walk and then a double, a double. Sandoval popped out and then single, double, double, double. Sounds like you at the bar last night. <laughs> no balls in one strike. Yeah, well, you know, could I say it's a long day. <laughs> oh, and two to Duffy. I have, I've actually never heard you order a double. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. My after. nose is now on the floor. <laughs> that's all right. You made Lot Simmons laugh, and that's all that counts. 0 oh 2 to Duffy. And Duffy happily makes two outs in one inning. Giants score six times. They lead 10 7. Must see tonight for Rubo. Check it out. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. Jeremy Affel, the new pitcher now for Bruce Bochy. 55th game that he has come into. 4 and 2 with a 2 5 90 RA. 42 hits, 11 walks, 33 strikeouts. You come into this ballpark, a ballpark that Jeremy Affel once had the Colorado Rocky uniform on. He's played here. The year they went to the World Series. The Rocktober. To Lewitsky's rookie year. Played two seasons, 2006, 2007 here with Colorado. So here's Zinoa who takes a pitch down low, one ball and no strikes. Affeld in his 13th year at the big league level. 
Turned 35 in June. He's had a nice career. And we talked to Affel when we were in Kansas City this year. Did you like Kansas City? Loved it. Asked him, did you like Colorado? Loved it. Yeah. I mean, he's just that kind of teammate. Of course, those are two pretty good cities. Swing and a miss, one and two. And he has enjoyed his experience in San Francisco as well. He's got another year left on his contract. And we talk to him all the time about, you know, what are you going to do after that year? And the first thing he says is, he says, remember, I got three boys at home. He said, it'll be a family decision. That's foul down the right field line and out of play. Well, I mean, he's still after, he's 35 now, and, and the way that he takes care of himself, the type of arm that he has, I mean, it's conceivable to think that, you know, with, with some luck health wise, he could get till he's 40. Well, he could be a specialist. Yeah. Not the oldest guy on the team, though. Tim Hudson has that distinction. Down low, two and two. But that really is. A reputation that really earns you respect amongst your teammates in the clubhouse when you put together a, a career that goes into its 13th year or in the case of Tim Hudson a 16th year. Says a lot about yourself. Look out. We're aiming at that guy. He's got a helmet on. He doesn't have a glove. Yeah, this is gloveless ball dudes here, but they do give him the one flap. <laughs> I don't know about the one flap. I don't understand the one flap. Either go two or none. <laughs> Symmetry. So, you know, it gets it to three and two. And this becomes a big pitch. Well, you're right. You're, the beef start coming up. More nose on deck. And all the momentum right now is in the Giants dugout. And Affeld knows the deal. Down the left field line, he hooked it foul. I'm looking at this guy you know the last couple nights. Switch hitter has played second base, third base flawlessly. It's taken him eight years to get to the big leagues. And I'm thinking, what took him so long? He hadn't had a bat at bat yet. is in that no man's land and it's going to fall. That's the course field hit. All right, let's check in with Greg Papa in our studio. Greg. Thanks, Greg. So, Greg, delivering good news. I'd kind of just like to make him the good news guy all through September. That'd be nice. Marneau takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Talking about AFL pitching here in Colorado in 2007. 75 appearances with a 3.51 ERA. And that's before they had the, the humidor. And that pitch is cast high, so it's one ball and one strike. So he definitely knows how to pitch here at Coors Field. Well, it also helps that, as you like to point out, he can get a ground ball. I think of all the pitchers in that Giants bullpen, he's the best at it. But on this particular infield, the fastest infield that we've seen this year, you only not only have to get the ground ball, it's got to find a glove. Yeah, it's got to be an atom ball. Good breaking ball, one and two.
You know, with Walt Weiss, the skipper of the Rockies, having been an ex-shortstop, I, I have to believe that he, he's got this outfield or this infield the way he liked it. And that gets away from Susak, so you know we'll move on down. And that's a mistake. So that's a free 90 feet. Now watch the hand position for the catcher, and that's going to get you into troubles when you try and shortstop the ball. You don't have your glove in a position where the thumb is pointing towards that third base line. The proper blocking position, you're going to have balls hit your glove and kick off. If he has that ball bounce in front of him, it, it freezes in Noah. And now they lose the force. And that's significant when you have a sinker baller out there like Athel. So now it's three and two. That was the one pitch Affelt had where he could try to hit a corner. Now you can't. Well, now you have to take advantage of the three run lead. You got to go right at him and you got to make him swing it. With whatever pitch you want to throw, it's got to be in the strike zone. Three and two. Popped him up. And he came at him with a 3 2 curveball. How about that? And that's a non productive out. And that's a rough at bat for Morneau. Well, it also gives you an idea now how I felt. He's got confidence in that curveball. Well, you're right. Good point. So here's Stubbs. He's had a good night. A couple of hits, scored three times. He's only had a couple of lifetime at bats against AFL. No balls in one strike. A little tardy on that first swing. And that's exactly what he's thinking. I need to start early. If he's going to look fastball. Ooh. And I felt wanted it. Yes, he did. Tried to go outside corner with the curveball. Susan gives him a good look. If the catcher does that, he's thinking it's a strike and it should be called a strike. Side. On deck is Corey Dickerson. Crawford's going to go to third. He just thought it was an easier play and a nice play. Well, and that's a mistake from Inoa. The old rule if the ball's hit behind you and you're a runner at second base, you go to third. If it's hit in front of you, you stay put. Especially with a guy that can run like, like Stubbs. It would have been a tough play for Crawford to come across body and get Stubbs. That's how fast Stubbs is. This is just a mistake. And when you're down three runs, that's something you're going to hear about from your manager. Good play by Crawford. Here's Dickerson. So if you're Stubbs, you got to steal, don't you? At least try. Yes. I, I should be a little bit more emphatic. Absolutely. It's a good partner. That is a good partner. One ball and no strikes. Dickerson's been a pain to the Giants tonight. He's got three RBIs. Look at him. 
He's 0 for 2 lifetime against Affelt. Affelt started the the suspension game yesterday and went in inning and a third. Always have a little conversation going with himself. Three and zero. Oh. On deck, Josh Rutledge. If they ever get, he sees something. Uh, that's a bunch of three ball counts in this inning from Affelt. Now he's been able to pitch through them. And this may be something mechanical that, number one, he's going to find out if, if he's okay, which we assume he is. And it may be a mechanical suggestion. The three run lead right here. Maybe it's don't spend a lot of time and energy trying to think about holding that runner on. Make sure he stopped. But get to a leg lift you're comfortable with to get you in the strike zone. Remember the Geico quote from Tim Hudson on yesterday's Giants loss. He said seven two here. Isn't that big of a lead you want to go. You want to go to that ninth inning with a lead because I mean you could give up a broken bat homer here. Well that's true. And we've seen the Giants come back down six nothing tonight. Three and zero to Dickerson. Rutledge would hit if Affa loses Dickerson. Three and one. And here's where Corey Dickerson is going to try and get two runs on the board quick. Yep. Sergio Romo, Gene Machi. And he lost him. So here's Rutledge. The numbers for Affeld against Rutledge, it favors Affeld. But I don't know if it's going to be enough to keep him in the game. It is not. So Affelt threw 24 pitches here in the seventh. He did get two outs, but he gave up the blue pit and then the walk to Dickerson. So we're going to take a break. Affelt departs. The Giants lead 10 7. And here comes Sergio Romo. Of course, the Rockies have something going on. 
And that's the man who's going to try to get the Giants into the dugout. And I'm sure he just wants it for one out. Romo. Pitched at both ends of yesterday's. Two ball games. On the year. Five and four. The four zero one ERA. More strikeouts than innings pitched. Romo against Rutledge in lifetime. Rutledge one for five with one strikeout. Rutledge tonight. He's bounced out to second. He's tripled. And he's lined out to Sandoval. Right there at the knees, and it's 0 and 1. So that's a big pitch. Now he's on top of him, 0 and 1. Now Rutledge is going to have an idea. I doubt if you're going to see him look middle in. He's going to sit out middle away. He's going to look for that slider. Popped him up. It's Crawford backpedaling. Side retired. Romo gets the out to end the seven. I need a nap. <laughs>Here it's 10 7. When it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. Good pitcher now for the Rockies will be Tommy Canely. 48th time that he has come in for these Rockies. Canely really got off to a nice start at the start of the year, then he got on the disabled list. And he throws hard. I mean, look at what he does. Lefty's hitting a buck 61 off him. Righty's a bit better, but not a whole lot. You're going to see a good hard fastball that's. I never, did, I never did like Mike Sin in the index circle when the new guy comes in in his last warm up pitch goes up against the screen. <laughs> and that's what Canley just did at about 97 and he didn't ask to throw another one. That was the top of the seventh. And all the extra base hits. That's 
last time five extra base hits in an inning. What a shocker right here. Outside to Pagan. It was a one out walk to Pagan that led to all of those extra base hits and hits. And Pagan bounces this one to LeMahieu. And that's one out. Fans follow every Giants game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. You get live in lookins, you get instant replays, you get MLB.tv game of the day, and you get my favorite more. Download on the App Store or visit SFGiants.com today. Here's Panic. Joe Panic had a big hit, a double in the seventh. And like you said, he throws hard. That's 97. Yeah, he gets it up there. You know, I think they think that he's got the stuff to close, but he doesn't have the best of command. And that's where he needs to improve his consistency. Split right there and a good one. But he's got strikeout stuff, no doubt. Buster Posey on deck, one out. Cued. Foul. And it's one and two. It's not a split, that's a circle change. Yeah, that, well, that's the problem. He throws 97, you want to get a little head start? Well, when he comes at you with that time off, type of arm action, it, it, it's the same as the fastball. I mean, you're out front. I mean, plus, you're just starting early anyway to catch up to 97. And a base hit into center field for Panic. He can hit. It's his second hit. And here's Buster Posey. Panic's average up to 314 now. Take a look at this two strike approach. Just going right back up the middle. Just a real quiet hand action. No stride. Head stays very still. I mean, he's got a. Very calm approach to the ball. Flat swing. Built for contact. But supposing now over 300. And he takes it in the dirt. And Panic reads it right away. And he's down to second base. Fastball right. No, it looked like a slider in the dirt. And Williams. Did he do the backhand, Mike? He did. But at that speed, I mean, that's a 90 mile an hour break of ball. I, I, I don't know if he was crossed up on or not because he had no body slide whatsoever. And he's a good little blocker. 1 0 to Buster Posey. Buster lines it down the left field line, and that's a fair ball. That's his third hit, all extra base hits. Panic scores, and it's 11 to 7. Have a night. And Giants now with 15 hits. I think he broke his bat. He did, right off the end of the bat. It's just a little reach there. On the left field line, and the extra base hit parade continues. And the Giants not taking the foot off the gas pedal either. You can't do that here. And Sandoval, the Giants have scored 11 runs. Sandoval doesn't have a hit, and he hasn't been on base. Of course, that could change here in a minute. And he takes high. Three for five with two doubles lifetime against Keenly.
Canely looks to second. And Sandoval pops one up. Racing in is Dickerson. And it's going to fall. And it's foul. I don't have any idea if Dickerson actually thought he knew it was going to catch it. Well, it's clearly a ball that could have been caught. Yeah, and I don't think that's the third baseman's ball. Well, you get a lot of guys calling for it, maybe. I don't know. What, what, he starts slowing down up here, and in the end, I mean, that, that's Dickerson's ball. Yeah. I mean, everybody else has got their back to the Almost hit him to in the, the foot. Hitter. Wow. So, Sandoval, new life. And those are the, the things you can't do in this park. Foul off the shin guard. I suppose he wasn't so sure. It's one and two. Swing mode. Yeah, I think I think Pablo thinks that in 0 for four with a walk is not going to make him sleep better. <laughs> he's trying to he's trying to go one for five with a triple decker. So we'll see. It's one and two. Here it is. Got him. Split or change up rather. <laughs> it's a good one. So an overnight five night for Pablo. Which we have not seen those happen very often. Especially here. Here's Pence. Pence has a couple of singles. Scored twice. He's knocked in a run. And it's a strike. Pence has a home run against Kingley. Right These are Kane. two guys that are going to go hard at each other. And the pitch. Broken bat. Center field. Stubbs dropped it. And here comes Buster Posey. And it's 12 to 7. And the wheels have officially fallen off the Rockies wagon. Oh, you're talking about a good center fielder, too. And kids, it can happen to anybody. Concentration. Is gone. We saw it with Dickerson on the pop up that wasn't caught. And here, a very good center fielder, absolutely must one. That should have been a no brainer. What do we say about standing around? You stand around, and all of a sudden, your concentration goes out the door. This is not the time of year to leave your defense on the field a long time. Tommy Canley could not believe it. He was walking off the field as he should have been. And as well, why so let you know that, that type of play will make you wince. Blanco's had a great night. Three for four. The only out was a line drive to third. And he takes wide. One ball and no strikes. Giants trailed six to nothing. After three. And they've managed to not just come back, but they've come back to take a 12 7 lead as Blanco's taking all the way. They have roared right past the Rockies. Well, you talk about a, a game to have in September to gain confidence offensively. This is the one. Down 6 0 on the road. Wow. Swing and a miss by Blanco. One and two. There's a tired team on the field right now, and it's not the Giants. No. And it looked exactly the opposite early in the game when the Giants were down 6 nothing. Jordan Lyles, the 
starting pitcher for the Rockies was on cruise control. And then all of a sudden, here they come. Blanco taps it foul. He got him on the foot. On deck is Andrew Susak. He's had a good game. Dodgers still leading. Well, actually, I just looked up at the board. Dodgers are now leading Washington four to nothing. I'll I'll be the guy with the bad news. <laughs> Come on, that, that's Greg Papa's job now. You, you know, I I was actually just kidding. I have no idea what's going on in that game. There you go. Pence goes. It's down low, and Pence is going to steal it. He gets hit. And for Pence, that's his 12th of the year. Uh, Don't know where it hit him. I may have got him on the left arm or the left thigh. Yeah, left thigh. He kind of ran right into it, didn't he? Yeah. Tommy Kennedy kind of forgot all about it. You, 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 know, you don't blame them. They start not catching fly balls in left field, dropping fly balls in center field. You have a tendency to forget about that runner. And that's tap foul. Twenty pitches in the inning for Kaley, and he should have been sitting on the bench. Two and two to Blanco. Susek watching from the on deck circle. Got him. And that'll end the inning. Giants score twice. Bottom of the eighth coming up. It's 12 7. Here's good news 12 7 Giants and the Giants have a new pitcher. It'll be Gene Machi coming in. 62nd time that Machi has towed the rubber for Bruce Bochi. An outstanding season.
Hunter's, Hunter Pence can spell Tula Whiskey. Uh -huh. Yes, he can. A couple of gamer babes showed up for the game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's LeMayhew. Two for three. LeMayhew's home run made it six to nothing in the third. Arias is at third. And the strike. Here are your pitchers tonight Petit, Kickham, Cantos. Affelt, Romo, Machi. Did I get everybody? Yeah, you did. Nice. Arias into the game. One out. It's going to find you, isn't it? It will. And that's about as close to a normal ground ball that we've seen in this series. Well, as fast as this. Infield has played. I mean, balls have been exploding into the infielders. So I'm talking about for both teams. There have been a lot of nice plays made by both infields. Yep. And and over half of the plays that infielders have made have been reactionary plays. Well, a fast infield will expose good hands, and it has in this series. Here's Williams. And a pitch high, one ball and no strikes. High again, two and zero. Oh. But one of the highlights of this game is when the Giants started coming back was the get let's go Giant chant, which we've heard in every game of this in this trip to, to Denver. And there's a lot of Giants fans here now. A lot of Rockies fans said, "I'm I'm over it," and left. This is a little flare, and panic is going to make the basket catch, and it's always good to do that. If you wear a Giants uniform, at least once in a while. Yeah, you got to bring back the basket catch. Because the father of the basket catch was the greatest Giant of all times, Willie Mays. And that's just for you, Willie. Buster just waiting for Panic to call him off, and indeed, a better angle for the second baseman. Here's Kyle Parker. Season Triple A this year, 15 home runs and 72 RBIs for Parker. One and oh to Parker, two outs, nobody on, eighth inning. Two and oh. Game started at 6:41 here in Denver. Last night's game went three hours and 44 minutes. Broken bat pop up is Crawford. He is going to move out, and he'll make the catch, and that'll end the inning. Ninth inning coming up. 12-7 Giants.
tonight after Giants post game live and you'll see it right here the Peru ball is the Jim Harbaugh trip to South America his yearly missionary trip he went to Peru and Comcast Sports at Bay Area went along Dave Feldman was there he drove the cab and he is going to tell you the story so check in tonight right after Giants post game live you'll see it right here on Comcast Sports at Bay Area 12-7 Giants he drove the cab he did he drove the cab very impressive Bob Scahill, new pitcher now for Colorado. He's had a nice season in Colorado. Springs, the AAA affiliate, 2-3 and three with a 4-3-2 ERA. You say, well, 4-3-2. Well, Colorado Springs is live, folks. It's, it's as live as Coors Field, maybe even a little more scary. Two types of fastball, slider. Time now for our Honda player of the game, and Buster Posey would be that gentleman. He had an outstanding night, another three-hit night for Buster Posey, who seems to be reeling them off one after another. Two doubles, a home run, and every hit a big one in the comeback for the Giants, and that is our Honda player of the game, Buster Posey. Six for ten in the series. That's all. That's all. Here's Andrew Susak, who could have been the player of the game. Susak is homered. He's doubled. He's knocked in three. And he's done a nice job behind the plate. It's no balls in one strike. It was Yasmero Petit who got roughed up. But guess what he gets? A no decision. He gets an ND. And he gets to spit the hook. And his teammates picked him up. Good slider, or maybe even a curveball there from Scahill. Scahill's got some time in the big leagues, all just about a year. 27 years old. Out of Lombard, Illinois. Bears fan. He's a Bears fan. High, one and two. That's going to start pretty soon, isn't it? I'm not sure. I haven't been paying a whole lot of attention. <laughs> it is baseball in September, right? It's the way we look at it. One ball and two strikes. Susak hits it high and deep to right. Blackman at the wall. He leaps and he makes the catch. Just for a second, it looked like Susak was going to have his second. Of the game. Well, that's the hot, hot part of the yard. We've seen a lot of fly balls that look pretty innocent leaving the bat, leave the yard. And I really thought he had one. Blackman going back and going high up the short fence. It's only about a, an eight foot fence. And Scahill thinks, whew, I got away with one there. Here's Crawford. Crawford had a double in that seventh inning to knock in a run. Here he bangs this one off his foot. Check that. It was a triple. Let me make an adjustment to my scorecard. Well, I mean, he's had a ton of triples this year. That was his tenth triple of the year. He's been amongst the league leaders in that category all year. At the knees. And he got him. So two outs here in the ninth. Lopez is getting loose. Here's Travis Ishikawa. He'd been on deck twice and not gotten at bat. Here he is. Now the third time he's going to hit. And there's a shot up the middle, and Ishikawa's got a base hit. 
And he's not a guy that usually will jump on that first pitch in a pinch hit roll. He'll he'll see a pitch or two. Not here. First pitch challenge fastball from Scahill. Whoop, right back up the middle. He hit that ball like he knew him. And both guys having spent some time in the PCL this year. Good chance that happened. So here's Pagan. We mentioned last night that in a nine inning game, Charlie Blackman had six at bats. Well, here you go with Pagan. Kind of an everyday occurrence, isn't it? And Pagan's been on base three times. One hit, hit by a pitch. He's walked. And here he wraps this one on the ground, and that's going to end the inning. So the half inning that we've all been waiting for, it's 12 7 Giants. And you can do that tomorrow morning. I've heard of those two guys. And Michael, talk about the game with Murph and Mac on KMBR 680, the sports leader. 12 7 Giants. And who we got, Mike? Javier Lopez. All right. Coming in, 56th time that he's going to come in. He's going to face the top of the Rockies lineup. 27 hits. 17 walks at 33 innings, 19 strikeouts. And a chance to close it out. And I, I think this is always something that's fun for any reliever to, to get the last three outs of a ball game. And a chance to stand out there and shake hands with your teammates. Travis Ishikawa comes into the game after pinch hitting and he'll play first base. Buster Posey done for the night. So here's Charlie Blackman. And Blackman takes a strike. Blackman has had one of those nights where you get a hit your first time up and you start to think, yep, I'm going to get four tonight. Well, he's one for four. Way outside, one ball and one strike. Giants fans are trying to get it going. And I don't think there's enough Rockies fans to drown them out right now. No, I, I think it's pretty much their yard. And really a pretty satisfying win when you come from San Francisco to see a, a series on the road. Or if you live here in the Denver area and you're part of the Giants family. Down 6 nothing to watch the Giants come back. Take the lead. Two and two not a Blackman. Part of the group.
And Blackman stays alive. He's trying to hang in there best he can against Lopez. Brought his glove. Got the eye black on, or at least the pasties. Gamer. Dinger. Two and two. <laughs> so <laughs> the mascot behind uh, the screen, Dinger, the dinosaur. Yeah. Well, when he showed up, Jan scored a bunch of runs. Yeah. I don't care. Dinger out. The commissioner said so. 12 7. Well, when Dinger showed up, it was. 7 1 Rockies. <laughs> and he's good for 11 runs. I'm thinking we need to take him into Detroit. Let him sleep back there. Now he can't upset Lucille now. No, Lucille's the best. What are you talking about? Yeah, we can't be talking about taking Dinger into Detroit. Two balls, two strikes. We're not taking Lucille. Out of play. So Charlie Blackman putting up a fight. Pitch number eight to Charlie Blackman. Bounces it to Panic. One out. Well, after Giants post game live tonight, remember Peru ball will be played in its entirety. Jim Harbaugh's missionary trip to South America, hosted by Dave Feldman, who drove the cab. So check it all out after Giants post game live. Zinoa who takes a strike. Now thanks to you, I can't take my eyes off Dinger now. Thanks a lot. Yeah. He's gone. He's sitting in that seat. Oh. Out of play, nothing in two. And he's right in front of Giants fans. You think they're enthusiastic? I don't think so. Hey, if we could live through the Expos, UP, we yeah. can live through Dinger. Outside, one and two. But those two Giants fans sitting behind Dinger, I mean, they laid out some big iron to sit in those seats, and now they can't even see the pitcher. Well, look at the one guy's got a stiff neck. He's leaning so far to his left. <laughs> Not happy. In tight. Two balls, two strikes. Dinger, take a hike. Those guys were not enthusiastic. Okay. He just, yeah, he said. <laughs> he summed it all up. That was a, that was a face finger, is what that was. And that's tap foul at the plate. I think you're right. Oh, I'd give Dinger fifty bucks right now to sit right in front of that guy. <laughs> oh man. He's, he's still looking at him. <laughs> said, what kind of contraption is that? Two balls, two strikes. That's foul. Give the guy a glove. Give the guy a chance. Some spikes. He's out there in wingtips and no glove and a one flap helmet. I know. So I, if, with the, there's a hat there, so in between innings you can put the hat on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta shed the one flapper just to give your head some symmetry. Three and two. It's
Ishikawa in foul territory. Two outs. And here's Morneau. Panikanish. Enjoying a chuckle. So what's coming up after the game? Giants well, post game line. It's Peru ball. And then Peru ball. That's right. Be sure to check it out. Jim Harbaugh's in it, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, he's the star. It's not scripted. Nope. Nope. It's good. It's a good watch. Up the middle. Crawford, off balance throw, and that's the ball game. So, it was 6 0 after four, and the Giants come back. How about you, that? You could not ask for a better scenario if you're Bruce Bochy this time of year to have your offense pick up a rough start by Usmero Petit, down six, and win by five on the road. This is a big, big day for this offense. All right. We're going to do this again tomorrow. Final score, Giants 12, Rocky 7. Eastern's Giants postgame live is coming up, but first... Let's go to the Sportsnet Central Studio.